Hi guys, welcome back to the CNC Auto Channel, your friendly neighborhood mechanic here. And I wanna share with you guys something I'm really excited about. Look right down here. I got a new epoxy floor put down by my friend here, Travis, and his company, Baseline Flooring Solutions. And this thing is just gorgeous. I've gotta talk about this. So what we've done here is a black and gray and white speckled fleck. This thing is so thick and hard. Travis tells me that I'm never going to have to worry about this stuff coming off. That was one of my biggest concerns is I've seen so many of these floors put down by the homeowner and it just keeps flaking off, especially under the tires. I didn't want that. And so I got with Travis and baseline here. And he's going to tell us a little bit about what makes this floor special and different than what we can buy over at our local home improvement store. So Travis, thank you so much. It looks great. I can't okay. tell you how happy I am with the, the quality of what you and your team has done here for us. Um, I'd love for you to tell us, you know, again, what makes this special? Is this the same thing that I'm going to be able to pick up over at Home Depot or, 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 or Lowe's? Not, not at all. So... <clears throat> We have a high grade of products that are built for professionals. Okay. Um, not not even close to what you'll pick up at Home Depot. Um, that is a similar product, but the quality is just not there. Okay. Um, the other thing is we go to great lengths to prepare the floor, and which is really the number one thing that you have to consider when you're trying to put a floor in, regardless of the makeup of the floor. Right. The prep is number one. Yeah, you know, it's just like when we're working on a car, we're doing body work. You got to get it down to metal. You got to have that foundation right before before you put the paint, or in this case, a coating on top of it, or else it's just going to come up or, or or fail in some way, right? Exactly. And you made a good distinction there: paint and coating. This is a coating. Okay. That cures out different from a paint that dries. And it is epoxy. So epoxy base. So we do a prime coat, then we do a base coat, and we uh, throw these flakes into this coating and they stick into the coating and they provide another layer of protection. And then we cover that up with what's called a polyaspartic. Okay. Okay. It's a quick drying top coat, basically, that will protect you from hot tire pickup. It will resist oils and, uh, you know, different chemicals that you're going right. to experience in a garage. It's like a three phase painter on the car. They put the clear coat on it, nice thick polyaspartic in this case. And that, that really protects those flakes and makes it extra hard and thick and, and absorbent of any kind of impacts and things like that. Right. Exactly. So Travis, uh, obviously you guys, like you said, the prep of the floor is super important. And I was impressed guys with, you know, I, I guess when I heard about, Travis talking about preparing this floor and he's going to come in here and grind a surface off a little bit. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I got to, I got to tape this whole place off. I'm going to have this big mess, this cloud of dust and, and rock chips flying everywhere. It was nothing like that. This machine, especially, I think is what, what made that difference, right? There was no cloud of dust in the air, super clean. And it only took them really one day. I think you guys can do this in a day. I mean, we we did overnight, but but still, it was amazing how quick it was, how clean it was. Travis, what? Why? Obviously, they're all the same color. They all say on floor. So tell us a little bit about the equipment that was used here. Absolutely. So I work for On Floor Technologies, and okay. my boys and I do this side gig, and we actually participate with On Floor in a way that we test uh, units, R and D projects, that kind of thing, diamonds on the floor. We utilize this for testing uh, okay. those kind of things. Um, this particular unit right here is a new unit for on floor. It's a cyclone, check this uh, thing out. really pulse vacuum system that um, it takes with the cyclones, the dust coming in and separates that dust. And the main filter only sees 5% of that dust. So what that provides for us is what you saw on this job. We didn't really have to go mess with the vacuum, clean the vacuum, clean filters or anything. Right, now um, I don't remember you turning the thing off. I mean. No. All that I saw was this bag down here getting filled up with dust and whatever was, was sucked up. But, I, you know, I mean, I can't vacuum my house without having to clean the filter every time. I mean, exactly. how does this thing do such a good job of separating all of those fines? It is that cyclone separation system. And okay. then we have 
a special filter and we've actually got triple filtration oh, wow. beyond the cyclone. So we've got a main filter, which is a really a high qual quality nano fiber type filter. Okay. And we've got a motor protection filter, and then we have a HEPA filter. So it's got three levels of filtration um, to keep that dust from entering the atmosphere. And I'm not kidding. These guys, you didn't even have to have on respirators because the air was clear. You could see just fine in here. It was amazing to me. I, I was not expecting that. So the you know, cyclonic. Uh, HEPA filtration, man, that thing worked amazingly. Now, to, to rough up the surface of the concrete, you used a couple of these floor surfacers or grinders or what, what do you call them? Yeah, they're floor grinders. Floor grinders, okay. And, and uh, you know, how much concrete did you remove or do you typically remove? Um, and can you get below surface imperfections like maybe an oil spill or something like that with these? Yeah, so... We typically remove one to two mil of concrete, um, not much more than that. If we get on a soft surface, your concrete was really hard. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was really hard. Um, but, and in that case, we remove maybe one or two mil of, of product. Okay. Um, and you saw that come out of the bag. Right. right. So, and, and this one was clean. I didn't have a whole lot of oil spills and things on it already. And so you're not really removing the stuff to, to, to get down below it imperfections as much as you're getting it ready for the coating is that right exactly so okay. we're actually using the diamonds um and these are man-made diamonds so synthetic diamonds you've but got a few and here. i've got a few here in my hand where out. you can take a look at the tips here in the diamond segment you even see it sparkling in there and so these diamonds grind the floor and then as this segment wears down it will replenish that space of diamonds it's also it's all throughout um, but we use those diamonds to saturate the area with scratches okay. and open up that concrete and break through the latency of the concrete yeah. so that our coating can penetrate. Cool. Um, they're, Again, they're just like a car. I mean, we're sanding down and then we're going to put the Bondo over it or, exactly. the or whatever. It's got to have it for my friends over across the pond. It's got to have that key for it to grab to. Um, and, and there are occasions where you would use different diamond abrasives that are designed to dig into the concrete or remove a coating like this okay that we can do that we'll oh, so you it. can remove something that was put down before that's a good exactly. point because a lot of times you guys think oh i'm going to do it myself save some money whatever and you put down one from the local home improvement store and before you know it you're calling travis and baseline <laughs> here saying hey man can you fix this i'm so frustrated exactly okay. so yeah show us these these machines i mean that uh, one thing about it is that it's heavy. <laughs> and this it's, is a smaller one. It's actually a small, lightweight, but but plenty of weight for the head to apply That's pressure to have, the yeah. diamonds. That makes sense. Um, yeah. And the unit, we didn't pull it out of the trailer to look at today that we used on your job as our big 30-inch machine. Um, but this 20-inch machine here is, I would say, the most popular for this type of project. Okay. So for, um, this, for this size, which we've got maybe a 30-foot by 30-foot square here. Uh, so a, a, this size is what you would normally exactly. choose for that space. Okay. That's ideal. And okay. it's easy to get in and out of the trailer for one person. Right. Uh, easy to maneuver even in tight spaces okay. uh, because of its size. And then some of the key features of the on-floor type product is it's a planetary system. These wheels are driven by the motor. And then as those wheels are turning, this planet, as we call it, the bowl, spins in the opposite direction, creating a spiral graph on the floor. Okay. It kind of reminds me of what we call a random orbit sander that, again, we're using Very body similar. So, yeah, this, this thing uh, reminds me a lot of the uh, random orbit sander. Now, do these things, is it, is it serviceable? Is it easy to, to take things on and off of it in case you, you know, need to change cutters or, 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 or sizes or whatever you can change? Show us a little Completely. bit about it. Completely. So, okay. On floor, we have sort of a statement that we use in everything that we say. It's fast and easy. Um, here's an example of that. So these tool plates, they come right off. You didn't even need a tool didn't to take it off. To. It just popped off. Exactly. And so we have, you know, about 20 different types of tool plates. These are for grinder, grinding concrete. Okay. And they pop right on. And then we have the diamond abrasive that connect here. It's got a magnetic connection that goes into a dovetail. When you slide that up in there, the centrifugal force actually locks that in place. So even though it's got little areas for maybe some set screws, you don't need that. Don't need that. That's actually for another type of setup. Okay. And then 
we have various different diamond abrasives that we use on all different types of applications. So what we actually use is one of our go-to abrasives here on this floor is our single bar. Um, the single bar performed really well on this floor. We do have a similar product in a round. And then we have a very unique product to on floors is our rip tip. So if we had an extremely hard surface, we would use this rip tip because it increases the pressure by reducing the amount of abrasive we have on the floor. Right, yeah, it's, the, it's the down decreasing the, the surface area of all of this weight onto that one point of diamonds, right? Exactly. So it's able to dig a little bit harder, a little exactly. bit deeper. Love it. Love and it. then we have this uh, unit here we call the, it's got the, you see the same setup. It's not planetary, it's just a, it's just rotary. So this just turns, we utilize this machine for all, all the areas you can't reach with any of the larger machines. So right, because this isn't this is only you know going to get that far away from the corner, exactly. but you can get a little closer in with one of these, right? You can get to the edge with this. You can get up into the corner. You still have about two inches left. Okay. But this is a great utility machine. So uh, we had saw joints here in this garage, and one of the things you need to do with the saw joints is sometimes when they cut them, they'll be a little bit uneven on one or the other side. Right. So we have to grind that flat. Okay. Um, and we'll grind around like your stand here. Yeah, you guys here. were able to get really close to my uh, my engine or my car lift here. That I really like that. Now I notice also that it has a, a dust collection ability as well. So again, not making a mess at at the home or at the uh, industry site. Uh, pretty pretty amazing. Yeah, so all the on-floor machines have a dust port and are virtually dust-free when connected to the right dust collection system. Um, and if you grab an on-floor dust collection system, that would be the right one. There you go. <laughs> well, I tell you, this thing works so well. I, I mean, I, I can't imagine uh, using a different kind if this is, takes all, all out of the air and keeps your workplace clean, saves you time, and saves your customer, whoever buys one of these time. They're not having to clean up after the fact. I mean, it's already cleaned up at the same time. Absolutely. That you're doing the work. Very cool. So, Travis, I, I've got a few questions about this epoxy coating that you've put down here. Um, you know, my biggest concern originally was, is it going to flake up? Because, like I said, I've seen so many people put this stuff down in their garages. And especially under the tires, from, for some reason, it seems to just come right off the floor, the stuff that they put down from a home improvement store. So, this one is impervious to, to tire. And what is it about the tire that makes that happen? So there's a chemical reaction that happens with the tire when okay. it's hot. So it actually will seep into the floor. Okay. And it's crazy, I know, but it does. So the chemical uh, creation here with the polyaspartic is uh -huh. designed to withstand that. Um, and All right. petroleum. Well, and okay. I know you know, I wiped some oil off of it, but here, here's the true test. What about brake cleaner? If I spray brake cleaner on here accidentally or whatever, is it going to harm it? It's not going to harm it with brake cleaner. Sweet. Okay. Uh, what's worse than brake cleaner, guys? Anything? What, what, what else could harm? Okay, I know. Acetone. Spill acetone. So if you spill acetone, you don't get it up quickly. Okay. You could mar the shine of the finish. Okay. Um, but it's not going to eat through the product. Wow. Man, this is tough. So that, that's great to know. Um, now, as far as like chipping off, you know, heaven forbid it. Some gets chipped off somehow. I, I drop an engine on it or whatever. That could chip it up a little bit, right? Yeah. If you break the concrete, okay, the, it's going to damage the coating eventually because the base has you know disintegrated, and so it's going to open that's, up. I think that's understandable. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So, but but can it be repaired? For sure. This system here is sort of a consistent confusion. We call consistent it consistent confusion. Um, I like that, but. We can come in and repair it with the same flake blend. So we have, and, and most companies that do this have similar uh, blends that okay. they use consistently. So you can get this blend just like this. We keep it around for such an occasion. Right. And you can come in and prepare the surface, reflake it, recoat it, and you really can't tell where that happened. Wow. And I, you know, I, I picked kind of a, a, a common color scheme or whatever, but you guys can make all kinds of different colors, can't yeah. you? Anything and everything and designs on the floor and all kinds of things. Completely. Wow. Yeah. There, There's really no end to the color 
that you can do. And a lot of companies, and we are one of those because we do this, you know, kind of on the side. We we focus on six or eight different ones. Uh, if you want to get really special, we might refer you to someone else. But you can get whatever color combination for whatever, you know, uh, team that you're a fan right. of or what have you. Yeah, here in Oklahoma, somebody's probably going to put down OSU colors or OU colors or whatever. So, yes. yeah, I can, I can see that. But, but it, it's harder probably to touch up in the future heaven forbid but but again unless you're dropping an engine on it you're not going to need to touch this thing up it lasts for what the, probably the life of the building <laughs> we get 10 15 years without really any problems okay uh, excellent other than you know things that are not normal um like dropping an engine but um what we like to say in our business is we're going to be here to take care of it nice. um, hopefully most others do that because you can't say never, right? Right. There may be something that happens that's that we don't know about yet. Uh, but for a typical garage setting, jacks rolling across, wrenches dropping, yep. Yep. et cetera, even a impact. I've dropped that on my floor many times. No issues. Awesome. If you if you've got an eighteen year old with steel weights, not going to stand up to that. Okay. Um, okay. So don't <laughs> drop your don't drop your heavy don't plates. Don't drop on. your weights. So again, it's beautiful right now. But I know that I'm going to get it dirty. It's going to have oil dropped on it, dirt from underneath the car, you know, rust, whatever. So how do I keep it clean? How do I keep it looking good like this? So you can take your hose uh, with no pressure. You can take a pressure washer, 3,000 PSI. Really? Clean it off. Um, but if you don't have any pressure, you can use detergent, scrub it, wash it off. Very you cool. could mop it. Um, there's really no specific care okay. for this floor okay uh, it'll withstand you know petroleum it'll withstand some detergents it, it doesn't really care well if it ha if it can handle brake cleaner it can handle anything in my book well travis again this is beautiful you guys did a wonderful job thank you so much the equipment i mean that made it look easy i know it wasn't easy fast you guys easy. were sweating a little bit but i but fast and easy for sure one day is amazing to have a beautiful floor that's going to last as long as you don't abuse it, break the concrete underneath it. Uh, I highly recommend going with the professional epoxy guys. You're going to you're going to thank yourself later because if you get the stuff from the home improvement store, it's just going to come up and you're going to want to have this. Thank you guys. Did Our an pleasure. amazing job. I can't wait to use it. So there you go. Man, this thing, this floor looks gorgeous. I've already started parking cars on it, and I can't wait to see how it holds up over time. And I'll keep you guys in the loop on that. Um, you know, I, I didn't have time, and, and I didn't want to take all of Travis's time asking the myriad of questions that I have. No doubt you have additional questions as well. Um, I'm going to leave a link to Travis's contact information uh, for you to ask. Uh, questions about flooring, um, epoxy coatings, um, the equipment that he sells, the on-floor surface grinders, the vacuums and, and cyclonic uh, separation systems. Um, hopefully you guys learned a lot. I know I did. Hopefully this was entertaining and I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you again and God bless.